Well, Miscavige is the man who made his religion a force to be reckoned with in Hollywood. The man who took a cue from Catholicism and turned Scientology into a real estate empire. But most importantly, he was the man who secured tax-exempt status Yay! for Scientology. Yay! Mm -hmm. but when do we get it? <laughs> you have to start your church already. Yeah. My thought academy. <laughs> it has to be called a church or you don't get tax exemption. Yes. Church of thought Academy. I'm a deacon. <laughs> but David Miscavige is also the man who let this incredibly powerful organization get to the point where they could be chipped away at and taken down by South Park, Stacy from Say by the Bell, oh, wow. and fucking 4chan. Because nice. if you'll all remember the first real target of the so-called Hacker Collective Anonymous, it was Scientology. Yep. And that was the fir really the first time that Scientology mm -hmm. really wobbled was when 4chan went after him hard. But to be fair, when it comes to the Scientology episode of South Park, South Park did have some ramifications. Yes. Chef left. Yeah. Isaac Hayes. It was like the only time, other than Muhammad episode, which was a little controversial as well, but it was the only time where the guys actually had some blowback from within. Mm -hmm. and, and Nancy Cartwright also was a, who's a voice for the Simpsons. Yeah, she's Bart Simpson. She's like, she's a famous Scientologist yeah. and has famously ixnade several episodes of The Simpsons that had some form of Scientology joke within that she would not participate in because mm -hmm. she knew she'd have to go through a hell of a rundown. Mm. Yeah. She actually came and spoke at Texas Tech when I was in college in the early 2000s and afterwards she came down to speak to everyone, was very nice, but she had a big fat stack of Scientology pamphlets with her. What, do you mean something like this? <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> you guys can't see it home. No. I have. That's a huge book. Feel how heavy this book is. Jesus. You seriously, feel how heavy this fucking book is. This is the entire class five Scientology handbook I have. And guess what I'm doing today? I don't know. You, you not read it? Our precious audience is going to learn a lot about David Miscavige. Mm -hmm. But I'm going to heal Marcus <laughs> with Scientological. <laughs> this touches this. Give me this. Give me this for one no. second before we get into this. Touches this. Look how big this thing is. It is a, it is a collection of every single piece of tech that you can get from a class five, like, kind of, it's for volunteer ministers. Oh, uh, volunteer ministers. Which means, guess what? Not getting paid. Oh, great. Well, you're a volunteer. Congrats. Yeah, you're a volunteer who has to pay for the materials yes. that you use to volunteer. I have the privilege to paying for the material because <laughs> then I have the privilege to go teach it for free. <laughs> this is the most asinine view of drug use I have ever no, yeah, seen. They have a whole thing with drug. There's a section where it shows a guy doing cocaine with a full fountain drink straw, <laughs> <laughs> which I guess is very hygienic. Very I guess so. so. Yeah, you don't want to get too close to the table. All right. Well, today, David Miscavige is a man with enemies on all sides, desperately trying to deflect questions about the decades-long disappearance of his wife while coming out of hiding only to film commercials showing off his admittedly fantastic new hair plugs. Ooh, yeah. Ooh. He looks like a kind of like you know those old commercials for batteries that have the plastic people? Yeah, yeah, the, yeah, the energizer people. Yeah. yeah. He looks like that. It's very nice. Yeah, yeah. they look like that Primus video for uh, somebody's beaver. Why known as Big Brown Beaver. Yeah. Now, despite their shrinking influence, Scientology is still a well-funded organization, as is evidenced by the two Super Bowl ads they aired just this previous Sunday. Curious. That, Curious. by the way, was the 11th consecutive Super Bowl that the church has had enough money to purchase at least one spot. Now, I, I am going to just do, just do a little bit of pushback. Gutfeld also had two. Yes. <laughs> okay, cat temp, good, good on you, cat. But Gutfeld had two commercials. Also, they might not be as expensive as they were. Uh, there's no way. They, they, it's I, like I'm seven certain, million dollars. Was well, it seven million for those ads? Well, it dude, depends Gutfeld on is, dude. What the fuck are you talking about? Gutfeld is on fucking Fox News. The Super Bowl is on Fox. Gutfeld. <laughs> yeah, they probably cut <laughs> him a break. And also, I, I believe most spots are between. They are between two and seven. And it depends on where in the game they they air. It was an interesting smattering of Jesus. Scientology and gut films. <laughs> but I'm just but the M&Ms are back. Yeah. I want to fuck each one of them in their little mouths. <laughs> oh, that's the only place to do it. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> no, it lets you crack open the shell. No, and no, then, no. That's where their pussies and their dicks are. Oh, inside of them. Stop that's true. It. That's true. I mean, I did show you guys that picture of that naked M&M &M last week, and it did have breasts and a vagina. Extremely. No pubic hair, though. Not a single bit of pubic hair on that okay. M&M. And I thought that was brave, And but I will <laughs> yes. say that the M&M did have boobies that we all recognized. Do you know what I mean? Yes. Of course. David Miscavige. <laughs> Here we go. Well, from what we know, the longer Miscavige is in charge, the more membership numbers crater. Hmm. He is, put simply, a weirdo. 
a manic frat boy <laughs> bully, a sharp-toothed Jeez. little boy with ADHD who was both confusing and cruel with his insults and punishments. He's like that kid from that episode of King of the Hill, the dusty old bones full of green oh, dust kid, yeah. the one that keeps bullying Hank and riding around <laughs> on his fucking lawn yeah. over and over, dusty old bones full of green dust. That's David Miscavige. But the thing is, it's a really effective way to just devastate the human mind. Of yes. course. If you, it, it's a, it truly is a scientological trick. Like the yes. idea of saying to you, a nonsense calling you a clam. <laughs> and then everyone laughing, right? Everyone be like, yeah, sure, for a clam. And they're like, what does it mean? What do you like, mean? Yeah. It, it's, it, it's weird. They say a thing to you that makes no sense to you, but they're all laughing like you just got burned out of your fucking shoes. Well, the follow-up <laughs> is, why? how am I a clam? I don't want to be a clam. Yeah. And then you they- have to move on to unclamming yourself. <laughs> Excellent. Shucking. Shucking. It's called shucking. <laughs> well, Miscavige is the man who introduced physical pain and torture to the world of Scientology. Whereas in the days of L. Ron Hubbard, it was more about control and money. Yes, it was predatory. Of course it was. But it wasn't that physical. LRH, I mean, again, truly, like, I'll strip away some of my ironic love of LRH. I do understand he was a difficult man. Bad person. Bad Piece person. Of shit. Bad guy. Con man. Thief. And right. all of this shit. But within him. Creator do, of a religion. Creator of a religion. <laughs> yeah, so. yeah. But there's a part of me that like, like I know for a fact that yes, LRH liked control. But really what LRH really liked was his uniform, and he liked his hat. And he his liked, corgis. He loved his corgis. Yes. He loved being on his boat. He loved everybody calling him sir, even though he he was bad at everything. He loved right. all the trappings of being the leader, where, and then he kind of was like truly very kind of introspective and thought that like, oh, maybe in some way I believe in all of this that I'm talking about, and I can kind of tech my own way out of this. I can figure yeah. out how to do this. But David Miscavige was uh, his violent hand like a mm-hmm. dying LRH had violence in his heart and it reached out and it chose David Miscavige mm. and then David Miscavige became the fucking slapping hand of Scientology. So L. Ron Hubbard is still responsible for his own creation of Scientology yeah. and Utterly. Miscavige. Absolutely. Yay. And say what you will about L. Ron Hubbard, but the man certainly had what you'd call an adventurous spirit. Yeah. I think that that's safe to say. Yeah, yeah. an eater's mouth and body. He did. <laughs> <laughs> but the difference between Hubbard and Miscavige is that Hubbard is, at his core, he's a romantic. As Henry was saying, he loves his little boats. He mm-hmm. loves the adventure of everything. Miscavige, he doesn't have a fucking ounce of poetry in his soul. No. David Miscavige came into Scientology playing an entirely different different game than everyone else. Mm -hmm. Miscavige was playing the corporate game, and he turned Scientology into a reflection of his own character. But really, the main question that we're wanting to answer with this series is, how does a cult survive the death of its founder? Put another way, it's sort of like a band losing its lead singer. It's like how Joy Division became New Order after Ian Curtis died. But would you not say that some people like New Order more than Joy Division? Yeah, and some people like David Miscavige more than they liked L. Ron Hubbard. Some people like Foo Fighters more than Nirvana. That's Who right. are those people? <laughs> a lot of people. I mean, I like them both. But yeah. David Letterman's favorite uh, musician is Warren Zevon, followed by Foo Fighters. And he's got his finger on the pulse of everything that's in the now right now. <laughs> the kids know. love David Letterman. Uh, they can't get enough. Yeah. But just as the ten that existed in Joy Division became magnified after the death of Ian Curtis until Peter Hook was eventually and wrongfully forced out of New Order. Does, Does anyone know what he's talking about? Agenda. Anyone know? I know because I listened to the series, but yes, it's, okay. this is Marcus's agenda. Okay. So too did Scientology take on a different tone after Elrond was dead. Speaking of a change in tone, when it comes to Scientology defectors, there are basically two camps. There are those who say that Scientology always has been and always will be a scam. Hmm. That's one camp. Sure. But a scam that you like, that's just a game. Yes. And then, or if it's your lifestyle, then that's you and you like it. But it's still a scam. Yeah, it's still a scam. You're still paying through the nose to play this game. Sure. But then there are those who still believe, even after they've left the church, that Scientology is real. They just believe that Miss Cavage came in and perverted L. Ron Hubbard's vision. Well, it's because so- they didn't go through the goddamn handbook and don't understand <laughs> that it's about touching knees. Mm-hmm. And then if you, I did a, read a whole thing, and I'm gonna work do this with you. Want to try this? Do. Please where, do. Where how you can make somebody sober using Scienti- Scientological like let's, tactics. Let's do it. All yeah. right. Because you showed up. You showed up hammered. I saw how you drove. Oh yeah, I'm, I'm absolutely <laughs> hammered. Absolutely. Look at the liquid death. Uh huh. Look at the liquid death. Yes. Look at the liquid death. Yes. Look at the liquid death. Yes. <laughs> Look at the Waterloo. 
Look at the Waterloo. Okay. No, you haven't moved. Look at the fucking Waterloo. I'm looking at it. Say yes. Yeah. Look at the liquid death. Yeah. Are you sober? No. Ah, I gotta keep doing until you're sober. <laughs> that is literally what you're supposed to do. Yeah. Well, it definitely could put you in a different kind of mind funk, a sort of focus, perhaps. Yeah. You could also just lie and say, yes, I'm not sober. Yep. Yeah, I mean, that's kind of the game. And then you find out whether or not you believe the lie. And guess what? You just got Scientology. All yeah. right. But no matter their philosophy, the people who have left Scientology over the last few decades have been incredibly vocal. And we therefore have an abundance of sources when it comes to figuring out just who David Miscavige is and how Scientology has gotten to the point that it now finds itself in 2023. Most helpful in this have been the books Going Clear by Lawrence Wright, a classic in the cult genre, Mm -hmm. and A Billion Years by Mike Rinder, the latter of which being the most harrowing because it was written by a former member of Scientology's inner circle. Mm -hmm. And there's also a real, I got some good information from Beyond Belief by Jenna Miscavige, who is David Miscavige's niece. And there's a little bit of kind of understanding, a little more context in the two. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of fucking sources. Yeah. 